From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Dave DeForest reporting. French left-wing voters cast their ballots in a Socialist Party presidential primary Sunday. They are hoping to choose a candidate that will be strong enough to counter conservative and nationalist rivals in the April-May general election. The top two socialist primary winners will then move to a runoff, which is scheduled for next Sunday. Troops from a region-wide military force moved Sunday into Gambia's capital, Banjul, where they were greeted by cheering throngs of people. Gambians are awaiting the return of their new president, Adama Baro. Mr. Baro had to take his oath of office in Gambia's Senegal embassy Thursday because the longtime leader, Yahya Jame, refused to give up power. Gambia uh, coalition spokesman, Halifa Sala, congratulated the public for the way it reacted to the crisis. Blood would have been spilled. To avoid it, everybody concentrated on the 19th that it was uncompromising that he must go. And everybody stayed at home, schools were closed, everything, the country shut down. After international pressure and threats of military action from regional nations, Mr. Jame flew into exile Saturday night after 22 years in office. Syrian opposition and government delegates arrived Sunday in Kazakhstan a day before uh, peace talks and an anticipated first face-to-face -face meeting between the foes in a year. Russian media reported a trilateral meeting was underway late Sunday between representatives of the talks organizers Russia, Iran, and Turkey. Negotiations Monday are expected to focus on cementing a nationwide ceasefire that began in December. This is VOA News. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu opened the weekly cabinet meeting in Jerusalem by reaching out to Israel's most important ally, the United States, and its new leader, Donald Trump. The two spoke by phone Sunday. Mr. Netanyahu later said Mr. Trump invited him to a meeting in Washington next month. Ahead of the talks, the White House said it was at the very beginning stages of even discussing moving the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Mr. Trump has called for such a move. Moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem would be very controversial. In some parts of the world, there are fears that it could spark a new wave of Palestinian violence. Here's the latest on the new administration of U.S. President Donald Trump. Mr. Trump announced a major foreign leader will be visiting Washington. We have uh, set up meetings with the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and uh, Prime Minister May will be coming over to the United States shortly. Also, Mr. Trump took to Twitter Sunday and gave his reaction to the previous day's Women's March, protesting his becoming president. He said that he watched the protests, but that he, quoting now, was under the impression that we just had an election. Why didn't these people vote, he asked. Later, the new president tweeted that peaceful protests are a hallmark of our democracy. Sunday marks the 44th anniversary of the U.S. Supreme Court decision, Roe v. Wade, that legalized abortion in America. Anti-abortion activists observe the occasion every year, this time with a U.S. president who says he wants the decision overturned. As a candidate, President Donald Trump promised to appoint an anti-abortion justice to fill a vacancy at the nation's highest court. He also said he wants to remove government funding from the pro-abortion group Planned Parenthood. The research group, the Guttmacher Institute, which supports abortion rights, released a survey that found the number of abortions in the United States has dropped to under 1 million per year. That's the lowest level since 1974. 
Severe weather has killed at least 15 people in the United States. Forecasters warn of more deadly storms to come. The National Weather Service said Sunday that southern Georgia, northern Florida, and the corner of southeastern Alabama could face tornadoes, damaging wind, and large hail. Eleven people were killed and more than 20 injured as violent storms and tornadoes rolled through parts of Georgia over the weekend. Another four people were killed in Mississippi by a tornado on Saturday. For more on that and other stories, take a look at our website. It's voanews.com. From the VOA News Center in Washington, I'm Dave DeForest. That's the latest world news from VOA.